What is this? We must call out these dangerous lies, even if others so in the media won't. My new series, Debunk, just launched for Zateo News. The first episode is devoted to debunking the top seven lies about Gaza and October 7th. Please do. Oh, it's and the please first do subscribe. In a new here. Segment we're calling Debunked. The top seven lies about Gaza debunked. Lie number one there was already a ceasefire on October the 6th, and Hamas broke it. You see it said everywhere by Benjamin Netanyahu, by Hillary Clinton. They all say it, and yet it's completely false. Just two weeks before October the 7th, Israeli airstrikes hit Gaza for the third day in a row. And on October the 4th, Gaza Strip protesters received bullet wounds to ankles, medics report. Does that sound like a ceasefire to you? Even over in the occupied West Bank, before Hamas's attack on October the 7th, Israeli forces had already killed a record 234 Palestinians. If there was a ceasefire in place before October the 7th, nobody told the Israeli military. Lie number two, the priority is freeing the hostages. There's no higher priority, Joe Biden has said. And yet last month, Israel's finance minister said bringing home the hostages is not the top priority. Hamas must be defeated, he says. Wittingly or unwittingly, the Israeli military has actually killed more Israeli hostages than its soldiers have rescued. In fact, as one Israeli journalist recently tweeted, citing new reporting from an Israeli news website, 10 hostages were killed by Israeli airstrikes in Gaza, some even as the Israeli military had intel they were residing in the buildings that were targeted. The IDF reportedly killed their own citizens and then lied and said they died in, quote, Hamas captivity. But sure. It's all about the hostages. Line number three, 40 beheaded babies. How can we forget the most emotive and most offensive lie of this entire conflict? A lie that went viral and was repeated by the President of the United States, who falsely said he saw pictures of beheaded babies, even though there weren't any, nor were their babies burned in ovens, as Israeli newspaper Haaretz proved in their investigation. They were all lies. In fact, according to data released by Israel's Social Security Agency, tragically, there was one baby killed on October the 7th, 10-month-old Mila Cohen, may her memory be a blessing. But in the interests of facts, she was not beheaded. Now, one baby killed is one baby too many, a tragedy, a crime. But 40 beheaded babies is just a cynical, reckless, repulsive lie that was then used to justify- Did Biden ever address that? No. One thing you have to remember is that if you are lying, but your lies align with the State Department interests, you never have to apologize for it. As a matter of fact, you will get celebrated for it and you will get elevated for it. On the other hand, however, if you are consistently against State Department propaganda and State Department interests, if you are ever even caught getting something wrong, even if you immediately correct yourself, it does not matter. They will literally badger you and hit you over the head with that over and over and over and over again. Noam Chomsky is a great example of this. Okay, people still bring up him saying, I would like to wait uh, for confirmation on Khmer Rouge numbers. Okay, Noam Chomsky has been correct on American foreign policy so consistently when the State Department hasn't. And yet, one is an outsider and routinely yelled at uh and even considered a tanky by some it seems nowadays which is really funny because he is a literal fucking libertarian like in the actual traditional sense not in the american sense and and that is because he is consistently against america's imperialist interests this dynamic exists for anyone and everyone you just need to remember that you need to remember that no matter what that's it Take that home with you. By the killing of hundreds of Palestinian babies. Line number four, there was a Hamas base underneath the Al Shifa hospital. Remember this video from the Israeli military claiming Hamas's main headquarters were under the hospital? Wow, an underground lair straight out of a Bond movie. To this day, we have yet to see any evidence of such a headquarters under Al Shifa. Sure, as the AP has reported, the Israelis found a pair of metal cots in a room fashioned from rusty white tile. They appeared to be out of use. Meanwhile, the Washington Post said the underground rooms found by Israel showed no immediate evidence of military use by Hamas, and Israel has provided no hard evidence that Hamas was using the hospital as a command and control. This is seven lies, and yet there are 700 of them, by the way. These are just seven of the most flagrant ones, I think. This is Israel's modus operandi. This is how they operate, and the media knows it, and they refuse to actually report on it in the way that they would for Russia, for example.
the level of criticism that we have for Russia, two states that are engaging in similar acts of violence, colonial occupation at this stage, annexation, and relentless bombing campaigns on top of a civilian population. And yet one is a foreign adversary. The other one is a ally, not even a foreign ally, but just simply a state, right? A military base. Look at the way that the media is critiquing Russian statements, even when they're sometimes in the off chance correct versus look at the way that the media reports on Israel statements when they have very consistently lied about every key detail that justifies their inhumane actions in Gaza and in the West Bank as well. If you cannot see this contrast, I do not know what to tell you. Control center. The Israeli military lied so that they could attack more hospitals under the same false pretext. Line number five, you can't trust the Hamas health ministry. Remember what Israeli spokesman Mark Regev said to me on Peacock back in November? The Gaza Health Ministry says Israel has killed more than 11,000 people in Gaza, including the a Hamas, number the of Hamas children. Controlled. Uh, let, the me, Hamas, let me finish my question. Let me finish my question. No, no, but, no, but, no but you, have to, you can't say that. No, but I, you said you have to say the Hamas controlled you ministry. You can of say that. In Gaza, I don't have to please. say what you asked me to say. Why mention Hamas controlled every time? Because you can't trust the health ministry's numbers, right? Except the Israeli military does. The Israeli military has secretly found the Gaza Health Ministry's casualty figures to be reliable and even uses those numbers for its own intelligence briefings. Oh, and the world's most famous medical journal, The Lancet, found no evidence of inflated mortality reporting from the Gaza. As a matter of fact, the numbers might be incorrect as a consequence of the entire hospital infrastructure being diminished to nothing now. And it is an underreporting of human casualties not an over-reporting of human casualties. Time and time again, uh, the Hamas-run health ministry's numbers have been checked, cross-referenced. Israel themselves uses the Hamas health ministry's numbers. The American State Department themselves use the Hamas health ministry's numbers. They have always been consistently reliable and trustworthy. Now... If you, for some reason, did not believe in the Hamas numbers and you genuinely wanted to know the truth and you weren't consistently bombing and engaging in an ethnic cleansing campaign, then perhaps you would allow third-party investigators to go into Gaza. Israel does not. Israel also has a policy of not letting in any journalists into Gaza and alongside their other policy of executing journalists and their families in Gaza, as this has also been one of the most deadliest conflicts for journalism and journalists in general, uh, more so than the 20 year stint of Vietnam in a matter of a few months, Israel has killed more journalists and their family members than in Vietnam. Israel also has a policy of only allowing journalists to, to embed with IDF. And on top of that, go through all of the accounts before they are released to the public. They have final cut approval on what can be reported from Gaza. And in spite of all of that, due to the proclivity of IDF uh, uh, occupants, militants, uh, routinely showcasing and celebrating their own atrocious acts, and due to the severity of the inhumanity of the Israeli occupying force in Gaza, in spite of all of those restrictions, there is still a tremendous amount of evidence that we can see with our own two eyes. Tremendous amount of evidence for Israel's ethnic cleansing campaign, that is. Gaza Ministry of Health. Line number six, there is no hunger in Gaza. That is an exact quote from an Israeli defense official. And it's a lie, obviously. Ask the parents of poor Mahmoud Fatou, the two-month-old baby who starved to death recently in Gaza. According to the World Food Program, four out of five of the hungriest people in the world right now are in Gaza. And line number seven, the Gazans getting killed today elected Hamas. They voted for them. Put aside for one moment the Bin Ladenist logic that says if you vote a way I don't like, I get to kill you. It's just not true that Gazans elected Hamas. It's a lie. Half of the population of Gaza are kids under the age of 18. Most of them weren't even born when the last elections in Gaza took place nearly two decades ago. And even in those 2006 legislative elections, Hamas didn't win a majority of the votes cast in Gaza. So, again and again, the Israeli government and its supporters in the West... 
Try to show a friend your video talking about Michael Brooks and my man said your name sounds Muslim, so of course he's not going to believe you. What the f*** do I do with these doo-doo heads, man, and her sissy friends do this? I don't know what to say to that, you know what I mean? But Hassan, I thought you were white. I mean, my name was Hank. I would be able to get to the thick skulls, the dense skulls of many more Americans, I promise you that. I'll just leave it at that. There is a reason why so many of my interlocutors have chosen not to address the statements that I make. And regularly either A, uh, battle against statements that I did not make, B, bastardize my positions and, and engage in straw man arguments, or directly attack the source by saying that I am an Islamist fundamentalist terrorist sympathizer. Because Hassan is an actual f terrorist. Your entire fan base are literally a bunch of suicidal f terrorists. Um... Honestly, uh, I'm pro-genocide. Like, it's not, it sounds really shitty, but, like, I think that Israel should just drop its fucking borders about where it is now, and basically, <laughs> Palestinians can go live in another place. That's, that's really shitty, but, like, that's about right. The only reason why those concepts actually work so well is because both of the guys you're seeing on screen right now are named Hassan. You know, yeah, <laughs> one of my most, uh, pressing... Uh, yeah, one of the one of the things I heard so much was uh, that I should go back to my own country or uh, join the likes of uh, the the Houthis so that I could be bombed by the Navy. I would pay so we'd raise a million dollars to send this dude to go fight in Yemen, and then all of us would volunteer for the Navy. Holy shit, he's such a cringe, LARPing loser. F I cannot believe, like, nobody in the history, no fascist ever could have dreamed of such an amazing representation of socialism as the most anti-American, like, pro-Islamic terrorist, uh, you know, Turkish immigrant loser that is, like, cheering on attacks on merchant ships as this multi-millionaire guy living in West Hollywood. Like, this is not an argument. This is not a criticism of any of the points that I'm bringing forward. Is just simply signaling to other freaks who are also relentlessly Islamophobic that I am not to be trusted. And unfortunately, that's just kind of how it works. I, I Look, I have a tremendous amount of privilege. So, of course, uh, due to that privilege, I can, you know, brush off a lot of these takes. There are plenty who are in a worse situation than myself who are visibly Muslim, we on values and on principles abhor anti-Semitism and criticize the state of Israel, criticize the actions of Israel as a violent apartheid ethno state. Our values are also aligned with the likes of many anti-Zionist Jews from the likes of Sam Cedar all the way to Felix Biederman and many other media figures but also, more importantly than just media figures, famous Holocaust historians, Israeli journalists, and the like. And yet, of course, they do not get the same level of attention and the same level of animosity and virulent Islamophobic sentiment expressed towards them. Because the difference is, you're Muslim. And Americans are predisposed after a, a decade or two decades of Islamophobic sentiment to justify the war on terror, which we also simultaneously acknowledge as a failure, are trained to say, say, well, you're an enemy combatant, even if you don't use those terms, and some do, like Destiny, who does use those terms. Others may not use those terms, but have that same energy. West tell brazen, shameless lies about the war, and so again and again, we must call out those dangerous and deadly lies even if others in our media won't. I urge anyone and everyone who consider themselves to be liberal, progressive, but still find themselves in the throes of, of pro-Israeli propaganda who won't be receptive to someone like myself to watch Sam Cedar. Emma Viglund and Sam Cedar do a great job covering the atrocities themselves. And they don't even serve three minute breaks at the top of the hour. We are aligned almost entirely, all, like almost completely. One, then, one must then ask themselves why they don't get the same, like, you are Osama bin Laden take. You and Sam are polar opposites. He's a comedian. Yeah, we're polar opposites. You're right. 
Here's another version of this, by the way. Here is the deputy mayor of Jerusalem, Fleur Hassan Nahum, responding to the reports that the IDF have targeted a Catholic church in Gaza. I mean, it's like the quickest short work I've ever seen, bro. Under one minute. Watch. Why is it necessary? It would, is reported to start shooting, having snipers outside a church. I don't. I saw the reports this morning. Um, the she saw the reports this morning. Hmm. Church. There are no churches in Gaza. That's crazy. There are no churches in Gaza. So I'm not quite sure where the report well, is, is, is talking a, there's about. There's a Catholic church in there, isn't there? That is. Yeah. Unfortunately, the... there are no Christians because they were. Then she says, unfortunately, there are no Christians in Gaza because they were uh, they were forced out by Hamas. Dri dro drove and driven out. By uh, yeah, well, there are us. respect. Not correct. Literally not true. There are Christians because I spoke to an MP yesterday who has family members in the church who are Christians. Well, I don't Unless know what happened. I wrong. don't know who was attacked. She said, I don't know what happened. I don't know who was attacked. I didn't see the report. I didn't see the report. I don't. I saw the report this morning. And it's like, bro, 